Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady, where you'll hear stories about people who get mistaken for employees when they aren't, and the stories are just absurd. Guys, to this day, I still don't know how it happens, but it does. Some people just can't seem to process that a person wearing a tie-dye t-shirt with bright yellow shorts and Crocs is not a freaking Walmart employee. With that said, my friends, I do hope you enjoy the stories today and do hit that subscribe button for future tales. Let's dive in. I worked as a hostess during college at a big chain restaurant that had a huge staff. My location was the management training location for our region, so we had a lot of new managers cycling in and out. Most of them were promoted servers or bartenders from different locations and had no management experience prior to this. I never loved working at this location, as a lot of the new managers were on a little bit of a power trip. So after a year of being berated for issues that were completely out of my control, I finally got a new job and put in my two-week notice. I handed it directly to our GM, I thanked her for everything, and was set to leave on good terms with the company. So, fast forward two weeks, and I received a notification that my schedule was set for the following week. I called the restaurant and remind the on-duty manager that I was no longer an employee, and they would need to put someone else to fill my spot. They apologized and moved on. So another two weeks pass, and I get the same notification. I once again call the restaurant to remind them, and again, they apologize. Before I hang up, I say something along the lines of, Hey, you might want to make sure to make a note of this because I'm going out of the country next week, and I will not be able to call if this happens again. They agree, and we end it there. So, this is where it gets dramatic. I'm on vacation in Spain, and I get a string of angry texts from a new manager, reminding me that I'm 5 minutes late. And if I don't arrive in the next 5 minutes, I will be written up and fired. I text back saying, Sorry, I know you're new, but I put in my two weeks notice over a month ago, and I don't know why I'm still on the schedule. The new manager replies, saying that although this might be the case, that it is absolutely unacceptable that I'm missing a shift that I'm scheduled for. She then tells me again that if I don't come in, I will be written up and in bad standing with the company. I respond, explaining that I'm out of the country, and although I'm very sorry for their situation, I'm no longer an employee, and there's nothing I can do to help. I then receive a string of at least 15 messages back to back. And let me tell you, they were the most unhinged messages I've ever read. They went from calling me unprofessional to an arrogant brat. Mind you, that I've never worked with this woman. She started after I left. I don't even know what she looks like. She accuses me of lying and being lazy, saying that if you quit a job, you need to give notice, and I should be ashamed of what I've done to the restaurant. Of course, I took screenshots of the conversation and sent them to one of the managers. Last I heard, she was suspended and then demoted back to her original position at a different location. Definitely for the best. It sounds to me like OP did a great job of preventing others from working with this woman. I would have trolled her so, so hard, especially after receiving those spam texts calling me names. You know what? I actually can make it. I will see you in 5 minutes, plus 10 hours because that's how long the flight is from Spain to the States. So, this happened to me in a gas station a long time ago. I was 17 years old, so legally I could not have even worked there because they sold alcohol. So, when I was a teenager, everybody said I looked quite a bit older. The owner of the gas station mistook me for an older lady who worked there. I didn't realize at the time, but the lady looked almost exactly like me, just older. So, I'm in the store getting a Red Bull, and all I hear is, Hey, have you clocked in yet? Now, I didn't think he was talking to me, so I kept on looking, and then I hear it again, and he says, Are you ignoring me? Suddenly, this 50-year-old man is standing right in front of me, like stranger danger close. He looked really angry that I was ignoring him. Me, being really confused at this point, I backed off and put my hands up in front of me. And at this point, I'm thinking, what the hell is going on? He screams at me and says, What are you doing? Get in the back. I don't pay you so you can stand and drink goods on the clock. Put on your damn work shirt. We have a dress code. Now guys, I was legit terrified. I had never been in a position like this before, and the guy was seething. I wanted to tell him that it's a mistake, but I stammered something like, Hey, I think you're mistaking me for someone else. I began to turn around and walk and pay for my Red Bull when he grabs me by the shoulder and spins me around screaming, Where the hell are you going? Don't walk away when I'm talking to you. At that point, something kicked in. I remembered the Red Bull, and I threw it at him. This was one of those big 20-ounce cans, and the dude lets go and ducked. I made it outside and stood by my car watching the door. This was before I had a cell phone, so I didn't really know what to do. Two things happened then. 
the owner came out of the store and a cop pulled up and parked. The store owner had apparently realized his mistake because he ran out and tried to apologize. When he saw the cop outside, he assumed that I had called them and started to apologize all over the place. I wasn't sure what to do, but I felt like I at least should let the officer know what happened. I told the officer that I was minding my own business when this man literally walks up to me, yells at me, and physically grabs me. Long story short, the cop asked to see the security tape. The owner kept downplaying and claiming, oh, you can barely see anything at that angle. After reviewing the tape, the cop calls my parents and we pressed assault charges. The owner ends up facing 4 months in prison for assaulting a minor, and essentially lost his business over that. If the dude had just handled the mistaken identity better, it would have been a much different story. But the scariest part is how much that woman looks exactly like me. No, no, no OP. The scariest part is that the guy put his hands on you thinking you're a freaking employee. I feel so bad for that woman who had to work for an idiot like that. Imagine how many times he's yelled at her, or even grabbed her forcefully like that. And that's just one employee, who knows how many he had. I'm so, so glad that he faced the consequences for those stupid actions. An aggressive boss who yells and physically puts his hands on employees is much, much scarier than finding a doppelganger. Oh, this person right here says, she probably called in sick because she was getting her arm in a cast. I certainly hope that wasn't the case, guys. First of all, I'm a bit older. I've got grandkids in high school, let's put it that way. So I've been especially cautious about staying home during this whole pandemic. Unfortunately, that means indefinitely cutting out my regular trips to the gym. So I invested in a couple of pieces of equipment for my house. I had purchased them from a local fitness retailer, who I'd selected in part because of their generous warranty and repairs agreement. But then, one of my machines broke. I called them up, and then all of a sudden, they were a lot more difficult to get on the phone than they were during the sales process. They wouldn't commit to a repair date, technicians never came in, customer service was always putting me on hold, endless things. Finally, I decided to go over and sort it out in person. So at this point, our state was only just beginning to open up, so things like fitness equipment stores weren't seeing a huge surge of foot traffic yet, and I was surprised to find about a dozen cars parked in the lot, mostly lifted trucks and jeeps with Punisher stickers and similar embellishments. Now, I figured that made sense. It seems like the kind of clientele whose first order of business after a nationwide shutdown would be to get to the gym equipment store. I didn't really think much else of it at the time. I was just coming off from a full morning of Zoom meetings, so I was wearing business-appropriate attire. Dress pants, pearls, knit turtleneck, the works. I came in and saw a line of buff, meaty guys lingering around near a counter, looking as though they'd just come home from work, and figured, hey, they must also be here for service. They looked surprised to see me, but I figured it was because most old people are staying put right now if they can help it. I gave a polite wave and otherwise kept my distance, and after a few moments I realized that the employees were calling the buff meaty guys by name, and taking them into a back office to deal with their concerns. I figured it was just a social distancing measure. So I went over to the guy wearing a store uniform calling names and asked, Uh, excuse me, do I have to take a ticket or get my name on a list or something? Now, this guy seemed surprised, too, but again, I chalked it up to age. He then said to wait a minute. I asked him if I should do any paperwork, as a lot of the guys were filling things out, and I figured they were claims related to repairs. But the guy kept insisting that I wait there. Meanwhile, a more senior guy kept surfacing every few minutes, calling people to talk to him in the back. I heard a Brett and Tony, but then, the more junior guy pulled him to the side and pointed me out, and I waved. The more senior guy came over and asked, Hi ma'am, uh, are you sure you're in the right place? And I replied, Oh, definitely. I've been planning to come down here all week. He then said, Alright then, we can chat right now. You wanna come on back? Are you ready? The beefy guys were exchanging some sort of puzzled looks, but I thought it was because I was jumping the queue. I assumed they were prioritizing me because I was at the highest risk. I said, Oh, that's really sweet of you, but most of these men were here before me. I'm fine to wait, why don't you give me any requisite paperwork to take care of in the meantime? But he just shook his head going, Well, before you fill anything out, why don't we just talk first? And off we went. I sat down in a small back office, across from these two men at a desk. Now, it did seem like quite the overkill to schedule a simple repair, but I figured this was life in the new normal. So, they looked at each other as though neither of them quite knew what to say. And I'm thinking, is this both their first day on the job? Let's get on with it. 
Finally, the more senior one cautiously ventured and said, So, um, do you have a lot of experience with the specificities, inner workings, and maintenance of gym equipment? Now, I'm thinking they're trying to find a reason to put me at fault and void my warranty, or otherwise upsell me, so I shoot back the curt but truthful answer and said, I've been working out every day longer than at least one of you has been alive. I can look at any model on the floor and tell you what they do, why, and which features are necessary, versus which features are just extra flash, designed to line your pockets. And I definitely know a working machine from a broken one, so I don't even know why this discussion is necessary. Just tell me what information you need, and I'll sign what I need to sign, and let's get this taken care of. The more senior guy folds his hands on the desk and went, Alright, listen, I'm sure you're very experienced, and you do know your way around, but listen, how old are you? At this point, I'm thinking, what? There was no universe in which he needed that information to get a repair tech to my house. I was really and truly lost at that point. Was he coming on to me? Was he insinuating that there's no use in fixing my machine because I'd be dead soon enough anyway? I said, what? What could that possibly have to do with anything? You have no right to ask me that. The more junior guy whispers and says, uh, yeah, I don't think you're legally allowed to ask that. So that's when it all starts to click for me. This is a job interview. They think I'm here for a job interview. The senior guy put his hand up in a shut up gesture to his partner and continues and says, It's just that when clients come in, they're going to have a much easier time trusting somebody who looks like them. So it's not even so much about age than that you're a woman. So at this point, the junior guy was in shock and in pain dismay and he said, Bro, no. He then turns to me switching to professional mode and says, What my colleague meant to convey is that we're targeting a certain demographic and he stops right there. They realized the situation was getting away from them at that point as I sat in silence staring daggers into them. Finally, fully understanding that I had walked into a pool of job applicants and been mistaken for one, I said, Hey, you do realize it's illegal to ask an applicant about their age or discriminate on the basis of gender, right? Now, at this point, the senior guy definitely thought he had the situation handled, and he exclaimed, You know what, it's really not about us, ma'am. We're just trying to keep you safe, you know? We're not saying you can't work here like you're incapable, just that you shouldn't. You know, we're doing you a favor by not considering you, really. There's a lot of heavy lifting that's not safe for old people. And let me tell you, your bone density decreases hand over fist as you aged. Haven't you noticed that? And the fact that you'd be in the store alone sometimes with other employees, you'd be the only woman here. That would be very uncomfortable when men come in, you know? So I went, well, thanks for your concern, but times are tough and I'm qualified for this position, so I'd still like to fill out an application. The senior guy then said firmly, for all the reasons I just outlined, I don't think it's a good idea for you to work here. Now, I had heard enough. There's no way that this infant sweat stain owned and operated a business, so I asked to speak to the owner. They said the owner was not reachable by phone. There was a tray of business cards on the desk, so I picked up the one that said owner on it. While it did only have a phone number for the main business line, it also had an email. So I said, I guess I'll just email him then. Now I need your full names. The junior guy said his name was Ken Lopez. Fine. The senior guy said his name was Brian Smith. I nodded and then asked, Hey Brian, why does your shirt say Andy on it? I then found his real card and took it from my records. Now, I didn't want to give the guy any opportunities to hide behind these bogus excuses, so as I turned to leave, I concluded a final time with, Just so we're clear, you're saying that you will not even let me apply for the job because you won't consider me based on my age and my gender? Now, the guy tried to stay silent at first, but eventually he cracked under pressure and babbled, Look, it is what it is, ma'am. While his clueless junior counterpart said, Good luck on the job search, and tried to offer me a coupon for my trouble of having driven all the way here. So I left and exchanged emails with the owner. I explained what happened. Not only that their people utilize discriminatory hiring practices, but that I'd arrived as a customer, and nobody greeted me or even asked how they could help. What I ended up getting was a hassle-free repair of my machine and a direct number to contact for the future. The owner also later called to personally apologize and informed me that the senior guy had been let go and the younger one was disciplined. And the kicker, the business owner was a woman. I'm so glad that OP held her ground and stood up to these guys. Imagine if it was a real applicant for a job though, that senior guy definitely was in no position to conduct interviews. That was the most unprofessional thing to ever say to somebody in a job interview. You're old. 
You're a woman. You can't lift things. Your bones are brittle. Sir, please stop. You're just digging yourself a deeper grave. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here, lady. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, do give it a thumbs up. And if you missed the last episode, I will link it right here. A Karen throws a freaking chair at OP, thinking they're, they're an employee. And it gets so much worse. It gets so much worse. Check it out if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you.